Turn off your lights. Make sure your doors and windows are locked. Things are about to get spooky. I think I drove through a wormhole or something by Bean Barrage. I got up and got ready for work, hopped in my car, ready to start my hour and a half commute. I'm driving my normal route and about 35 minutes into the drive, I miss my exit due to a weird traffic incident where I just couldn't get over in time. No big deal. I continue on and just let my GPS recalculate. I like using my GPS regardless of knowing the route because it gives me a good insight into traffic patterns and things like that. It calculates to the next exit and even saves me a couple minutes. I was like, oh nice, maybe I just found a secret shortcut to work. So at this point, I blindly follow the GPS as I am unfamiliar with a lot of the routes at this point and I drive for another 20 to 25 minutes or so. This is when it gets weird. I come up on a road that seems familiar to me for some reason, and I discounted the feeling because of the off chance maybe I had been there before. I then turn onto a road and realize that I'm on a road that connects to the road my house is on, and I've never gone this way because I never had a reason to. I think, wow, this is weird. How did I get turned around like that? So at this point, I know I'm going to be late, so I call my boss and let him know I made a mistake. I decide I might as well stop at my house to let my dog out and quickly go to the bathroom. This is the weirdest part. As I approach my house, I look at the driveway and my heart sinks. My car is in the driveway. Same license plate and everything. That's when I look down at the steering wheel and realize I'm driving my wife's car. I pull into the driveway and walk in the house. My wife was confused to see me because she knew I had left for work not long ago. I was surprised to see that she was still awake because she works night shifts at the hospital. I asked her if she by chance saw me take her keys out of her purse to drive her car that day. She reaches into her purse and pulls her keys out. I reach my hand in my pocket and pull out my keys. How was I driving her car with my keys? Our cars are very different, but the fobs are similar. I again discount it as a weird mix-up and hop back in my car to go to work this time. I text an update to my boss and let him know the situation. I get on the road and this time I wanted to make sure that I didn't miss my exit. As I'm approaching the same exit I missed last time, I see emergency vehicles lie in the road and the exit is closed. There was a car crash on the exit involving a semi-truck. The car that was in the accident was the same make and model of my car. I found this to be very spooky. Again, I'm forced to drive a different route to work and at this point I'm very frustrated. I call my boss and again just to let him know and he says, No worry, you should still be able to make it in time for the meeting. I look at my clock and it's as if I was on time. How? I called my wife just to confirm I was home a while ago, and she said I wasn't home, but she couldn't find her keys anywhere. I was starting to freak out. I checked my phone's previous calls and texted my boss, and there was nothing. I never called or texted him. Do I need a doctor? Update 1. My wife found her keys. They were in my work pants that I wore the day before. Update number two. I asked my boss for a mental health day because the experience has been very unsettling. I spoke with my boss about the experience I had and he said I have the day off to figure stuff out. Yes, he's a very cool boss. 
This is what I found out. More questions than answers, really. I've been trying to find any news regarding the accident I saw. I have been looking up the exit and interstate to see if I could pinpoint who was in the accident, because it did not look survivable. Nothing. I couldn't find anything on the accident, and it's been eating me up. I mapped out my route and traced the exit that I thought I took. The only plausible exit that I took doesn't seem to connect or turn around back to my house in any way. It does, however, provide an alternate route to work. I haven't been back to the exit where the accident happened. I want to investigate to see if I can see any signs of a wreckage, i.e. fluid stains on the road, bits of car with matching color, things like that. We'll update when I go back there. I have somewhat of an eidetic memory, I guess. I usually can recall very specific information about an event, what someone's wearing, color of their coffee mug, etc. Things that other people usually just disregard as unimportant. That's why this part is really frustrating to me, because for the first time in my life, I cannot remember any details about the intersection with my wife. My wife is my rock, and she's been very supportive throughout this experience. I try to remember specific details about our interaction, but I can't seem to pick out any specific details like I usually would. She works night shift as an NICU nurse, and it was her day off, so sh her schedule is all over the place, and I thought for sure she would be sleeping when I got home, but she was awake. The key fobs are a mystery as well, but for safe measure, I went out into the driveway and ran a test to make sure that the car would not start if I had the wrong keys, because I've heard such things of being possible with certain cars. But no luck. It, it didn't start. I switched cars and test vice versa, and nothing. The only plausible explanation here is that Maybe I grabbed her keys from her purse after getting home unexpectedly, and then just drove my car to work, but that doesn't explain her keys being in my work pants from the day before. She found them before I even returned home. I appreciate everyone's support and ideas through this weird experience, and will update if I connect any of the dots. So far, I'm rationalizing it as some kind of false memory, or perhaps a lucid daydream, or some sort of disassociation, which doesn't necessarily make me feel any better. To people that are saying the experience is fake, the thing is, it might be, but it felt really real to me, and I'm just trying to be rational about it. Because every one of computer's predictions had come true, we asked it what year humans would cease to exist. We were shocked when the screen displayed a simple 1945. Baby Daddy showed up twice by OK Quell. 9021. Last Saturday morning, I went to meet up with my son's dad so he could spend a couple of days with him as per our usual schedule. We meet up at a convenient halfway point in a large box store's parking lot. It was early for a weekend, so I didn't even think the store was open yet, and a lot was empty as far as I remember. This particular day, we parked in a long, empty road against a curb facing towards the curb, so there were no cars in front of us or beside us, and a wide driving aisle behind and between us and any other cars in the lot. I often arrive before his dad does, and the usual routine for my son and I while we wait is to keep listening to his audiobook while he fiddles around with a sunroof. As we're doing that, I saw his dad pull up to my left and park next to me. 
He opened his door, got out to walk around our car, so I turned to my son, who has his head and his dog's head sticking out of the sunroof, of course, and started to say my I love yous. Okay, side note. I specifically noticed that his rear passenger window of his dad's car, which my son has covered in stickers, was rolled down. Which is unusual with only him in the car. I always look for the stickers as a quick identifier when keeping an eye out for his car, as it's a reasonably popular make and model, and I don't think I've ever seen him do that before. I also saw that my son's dad was wearing sunglasses, along with a tank top that he got a few years ago at a musical festival. A tank is slightly unusual for him, he usually prefers t-shirts. So I noticed that this tank in particular because it was old enough that I was there when he got it. His hair is getting long and he had it half pulled back, which he started doing recently. I saw all this. I know I did. Okay, so my son ducks his head back in, replies gamely to my goodbyes and hugs me. And then he gives me a funny look and says, why are we doing this already? I laughed and pointed out my window to show him that daddy had pulled up while he was playing with the sunroof. Except when I turned around to show him, his dad is not there. In fact, there are still no other cars parked beside us at all or anywhere even near us. My heart gave a kind of funny little leap when I saw this, because I know what I saw, but I tried to just shake it off because, well, what else could I have done? I laughed at myself and told my son his mom is being a goofball imagining things. I wasn't sleep deprived or anything, but I thought maybe I had spaced out for a minute. I don't know, we tried to rationalize things. Less than five minutes later, my son's dad pulls into the same spot I had imagined he was in before. He had his sunglasses and the festival tank top on. His hair was half pulled and the rear passenger window was rolled down so you couldn't see the stickers. I was really weirded out, but kind of laughed it off when my ex asked me what was wrong because I just didn't know what to do with the information I had. I hadn't even talked to anyone about it since then because it freaks me out. Thinking about it in retrospect, I can't even remotely explain why, if I had a daydream in the first arrival, I would have picked out those specific and unusual details. I know it isn't a big glitch or anything, I didn't die in a car crash or come back to life or something, but it was so real and so random and specific that it's throwing me through a loop. Also, for the record, I have excellent fire slash carbon monoxide detector installed after we had a fire a couple of years ago. We check them pretty regularly, and I'm fairly confident, uh, about as sure as I can be, that this isn't any health thing because a few weeks ago I had a battery of tests, MRI, MRA, CT scan, full body panel, the whole works, done to try to pinpoint the reason for my medically insignificant on its own, just really annoying condition I have. While they couldn't figure out why it was happening, they also didn't find any scary tumors or aneurysms or any other baddies. Oh, one more thing, for what it's worth, the first time I saw him arrive, our puppy, held by my son who was staying up in the sunroof, got really excited, wagging out of his arms and ran to my lap, just like he always does when he sees my son's dad arrive. I didn't even think about that until just now, but he did and was in my lap waiting until he arrived for real. I don't know, it, it seems like maybe he saw something too. I could be reaching, though. So yeah, I guess I'm just a little dumbfounded. I'll probably never know, but it was an unsettling experience for sure. Update as of August the 12th of 2024. 
I did speak to the baby daddy this evening about what happened last weekend, unsettled for two reasons. First, in answer to my question, he says no. He did not arrive, then pull around the lot for XYZ reasons, then come back, so that's ruled out. The more disconcerting thing, though, was his reaction when I first brought it up. He doesn't remember us talking about it last weekend. Like, at all. I started off by saying, So, uh, remember how I was tripping last weekend and thought you showed up, but then you didn't? And kind of laughed. And he just stared at me blankly for a second. He said he doesn't remember, no. I said, yeah, remember when you showed up and I told you I said goodbye to kiddo twice because la la la? And he's kind of smiling along with what I was saying, but clearly lost. So I had to tell him the whole story again, start to finish, and it still didn't strike a bell. I mean, it's possible that he forgot, yes. He's not a noticeably forgetful person. But, I don't know, maybe he was distracted? I say it's much less possible than him trying to pull one over on me to creep me out. It's not really his kind of humor. Slim chance? Sure, I guess, because anything is possible. And the other possible things are getting really weird. One good thing is that he seems to believe me that something happened. He's open-minded, but... I can also tell he was thinking maybe I got confused or whatever, I don't know. But he's not flat out calling it BS. I also asked my son if he remembered, but I didn't want to creep him out by going into detail. So all I said was, remember how we said goodbye twice? And he was like, "Uh uh-huh. Unfortunately, he is also young enough and distracted enough that I'm not totally convinced he was following along authentically. Or just like, "Uh uh-huh, mommy, yeah, let me get back to drawing this picture of Minecraft dudes pounding other Minecraft dudes. So, yes, that's where I am right now. Thoughts, suggestions, I have no dash cam, unfortunately. Open up, it's the police. We yell through the door to surprise the groom with a night out before his wedding. But when we unlocked the door and walked in, we found him crying at his computer, wiping his hard drives frantically. Ant Popped Into Existence by Teneman Preference is to say that I've had rear run-ins with spirits and such. I believe and communicate with Wu, so I don't know if this is related. But I'm pretty sure it's a glitch. A little context for start. My grandma just went to hospice. I have been living with my grandma for two weeks now to keep an eye on her slash caretake for her. She's doing very well considering... She had a couple unused rooms in her house, one a bedroom and one that I'm using as an office for my laptop work. As my grandmother started having recent medical issues last month, and started becoming annoyingly prevalent in my mom's home, where I had been living. I was relieved to move into two unused rooms because I thought I'd be rid of ants. Lo and behold, my mere presence in the office, without even food, started bringing ant stragglers in. Peculiar, I thought. There was nothing for them to go after. I've gotten used to ants being around me at this new location over the last two weeks. Today, though, I was working on my laptop, looking at a spot on my screen, when an app popped out as if it came through a portal on my monitor out of thin air in the exact area I was looking at. It's not like it transversed the screen to get to that location. I certainly wouldn't have noticed it walking. It happened in an instant, but seemed to come through head first and then the whole body was there. 
It seemed a little surprised at first, flailing its tendons in the air, getting its bearings, and then it continued to walk around. I gently flicked it onto the table where it scurried away. I have not seen a single ant since. What the fuck? This was hours ago. A friend asked if it fell from the ceiling. No ants have been up there, and my laptop screen was at an angle that it would have kept falling had it been the case. I told my mom about it, and she said she's seen this happen before multiple times, and even seen them dematerialize, like watching it, then pop, not there anymore. It's like ants are from another dimension. The other night, I witnessed some very bizarre ant behavior. One randomly started contorting and looking really pained. I think it died. Nearby, another one stood perfectly still except for a repeated antenna swoop it did every 10 seconds or so. There have been so many ants lately that I started watching them out of curiosity, contemplating if they're run by a hive mind. And last week, a scorpion showed up out of nowhere, but maybe it had actually scuttled all the way through the house to walk into my peripheral vision, where it stopped. I've never seen one here before, but there's no guarantee it teleported itself in. I've had some really bizarre experience in the past with ants and scorpions, particularly regarding my dad's death. Anyway, my mom has talked about ants materializing and dematerializing, and now I realize she actually meant they physically pop in and out of existence. Has anyone else seen this? Is this a thing bugs or hive mind creatures do? After a night of watching scary movies, I truly believed it was a psycho killer breaking in when I pulled the trigger and I told my father returning home early. I tearfully explained to the officer. Emerging from the room I was always forbidden to enter, the lead detective, Ashen Face, said, You may have been correct the first time. Happened twice in our house by Crazy Black Cat Lady. I'll try to keep this short as I can. A couple of years ago, my dad stayed the night at our house. Our spare room at the time had internet equipment in it, and when I was setting up the room, I put black electrical tape over the flashing lights as they were quite obnoxious in the small room in the dark. A while later, when he was ready to go to bed, I walked in, and no tape. I freaked, and my dad and husband thought I was losing my mind, pregnant and sleep-deprived. I laid in bed, questioning a lot of things that night, and then terrified that my mind was going. Fast forward to the next day, and we all get up and are sitting in the living room, when my husband goes to check out of curiosity and comes back, white as a ghost. There was the tape, slightly dusted from our slightly dusty floors, as if it had been there all night long. My dad, who was very level-headed, couldn't even write it off and just brushed it off like we were done talking about it. Fast forward to tonight. I have two toddlers, and after dinner, I'm exhausted and go to lay down in our bedroom. I'm in one of those sleep trances, dozing off, where you're not fully asleep so you can hear what's going on around you. My husband came back and asked me through the door if I needed a hug. Door was locked to keep the toddlers out. I remember being slightly annoyed and finding a little off that he woke me up to ask me that. I told him it was fine, just tired, and dozed back off. Fast forward about an hour and he's back at the door, waking me up, asking if I got his text messages. Most of them saying I don't want to talk about what's wrong, I don't have to, but he was here to support me with lots of love emojis and gifts. 
Now, I'm confused and he's looking terrified and freaked out and swears he heard me crying from the bedroom from behind the door. He said it was very distinctively my cry and he thought something was bothering me and I was keeping it from him. It took me a full half an hour to convince him that I was not crying to my knowledge and typically if I'm crying in my sleep, I'll wake up crying. It took me 30 minutes of hardcore convincing him that I was not crying and nothing was wrong before I think he started to believe me. Now, I'm definitely awake and we're both freaked out, wondering if it was the house or an entity or what he even heard. All I can think is how every horror movie starts and I'm slightly terrified for our safety. If you made it this far, thank you so much for listening. That stupid creep that's been staring at us girls in my neighborhood actually followed me to this old abandoned warehouse at the edge of town. Slipping out a side door as he anxiously entered the building, I quickly text my usual delivery here and run like hell hoping I won't hear the screams this time. Bracelet Glitch by King Coke Boy Earlier today, I was getting dressed in my bathroom. I was wearing one of those beaded bracelets on my right wrist. I went to put my hair pomade in my hair, so I grabbed a glob of pomade and rubbed my hands together quickly and heard a snap. Felt beads fall off my wrist and looked down to see a quick glimpse of beads spreading out. I felt like I must have broken the bracelet I was wearing, and I was really annoyed since it was loud and I heard the clunking of beads hitting the bathroom floor. I swear I saw the glimpse of beads spreading everywhere, and then I looked up at the mirror at myself like, oh damn it. My eyes were off the floor for one second. I dropped down to grab the beads, but suddenly couldn't see them on the floor. I felt like my wrist was naked, but then I looked at it and the bracelet was still on it. I grabbed it, stretched it, took it off, and put it back on. Everything looked normal. Same beads, same everything. But I know what I felt, heard, and saw. Hopefully you guys know what I mean when you feel something break, like it felt like a release off my wrist. It's very strange. I'm just confused and know that it couldn't be any other bracelet or beads. I have one bracelet like that, nothing else. I never post before and only post now because I'm generally confused. No drugs, no alcohol, and no dreaming. My username is just a dumb fun name. I wish to hear if anyone else has had this happen to them. Thanks. I will give you all the riches you will ever need in exchange for your firstborn son. And if you do not have a son by the end of your life, your soul will be mine. After the 17th miscarriage, I started to catch on that it wasn't a firstborn the devil wanted. Glitch at Trafalgar Square, London, England by JGame23 Jaden Hey everyone, this is a glitch that has been on me and my family's mind for about four-ish years with no conclusion, but I want help on it today. Me and Cousin One at age 17 and 18 went to London with our mothers for a vacation and to visit some family. We visited the majority of all the monuments slash tour spots in London as it was our first time in England visiting ever. Now the weird thing is in Trafalgar Square and the four lion statues because me 
My mother, auntie, cousin number one, and somehow cousin number two, remember cousin number two being there with us and climbing the lions, but cousin number two never came to England with us. Cousin number two was 16 years old at the time and had not visited England until 19, but cousin number one and I haven't been since age 17 and 18. So it's not possible this memory occurred on the second visit because there was no second visit for me and cousin number one. My mom's only conclusion is that she thinks what happened is there was a four lion statue identical to the last detail, including the statue in the middle of the lines in the Universal Studios Orlando, US. Not sure if that might help you guys figure this out, but if it does, awesome. We as a family would love to finally figure this out because it's pretty crazy to all of us. Important detail missing, we have a picture of us on top of the lines, but the pictures are wiped off of all of our old phones like they never even existed. Usually, I'm not this quick to tell people I can see the dead, but, but in your case, I urgently need to make an exception. Because the dead can see you. New Headphones, Old Problems by Anonymous Hello everyone, this is one of the more in-your-face glitches I ever had. I thought it was worth a share, and I hope you all agree. Throughout my life, I've had these things disappear, even as a child. I put down a toy, go to grab it again, and it was gone. It'd be like a little over or on the other side of the room. Most of the time, I write it off as my brother messing with me or a bad memory. This kind of happens even in my teens, things moving on their own. I now live in a small apartment, alone, no one else to mess with me. Since this has happened on and off my whole childhood, I always place things down in the same spot. It's just how I try to take I'm the problem out of it. Well, this last week, I bought myself a new pair of headphones, well, earbuds. I spent more money than I liked on them, but all the reviews said they were worth the money. I got a little extra cash, and since my old ones died two weeks ago, I wanted to treat myself. I got into my place, bags in hand. I carefully placed the small bag with the headphones in their black square box on my kitchen counter before putting down the other bags and started to put away all the groceries I bought as well. It took me about 10 minutes max to put everything away. I grabbed the small bag and feel nothing but the bag and the receipt. My whole body went cold at the dread of something not being where I had put it. The bag was here. The receipt was here. But the headphones were not. I looked around the counter. I looked on the floor. It wasn't round, it couldn't have rolled, and I didn't hear anything hit the ground. My little place was turned upside down. I looked under everything, on everything. I found places I needed to clean, but not where my brand new, not even out of the goddamn box headphones were. I started to think about how I was going to get my money back or a replacement. I didn't have the money to buy them again. I grabbed the bag and felt them. The box was in there. I'm not too proud to say I cried a bit. I grabbed my car keys and went back to the store. I was not keeping disappearing, glitching headphones that I knew would just disappear again in the future. I did buy myself something else that was cheaper and didn't glitch on me when I got them home. I might have overreacted, but I thought you enjoyed the story. It was the middle of the day, I hadn't had anything to drink and all of that.
After enduring years of torture from my parents, I'd vow never to lay a hand on my children. As my palm comes in contact with my wife's bruised face, I remind her that hurting my son is not allowed in my household, even if he hit her first. My body wash just appeared while on a trip, only to find it in my bathroom when I got home. By their mystics. I went on a trip this weekend. I brought my shampoo, conditioner, body wash, and loofah. I know this because I used them while away. The loofah was wet and smelled like my body wash. I hung it up in the shower to dry. I remember carrying my body wash back to my room, was an Airbnb, but couldn't find it the next morning. I was so tired that evening, I could have accidentally missed it and mistakenly thought I had carried it back and had accidentally left it in the bathroom. So, I thought someone had took it and messed up by leaving it in there. It is replaceable, so not a big deal. I remember using the loofah with my body wash in the Airbnb. I remember struggling to carry my body wash with the shampoo and conditioner and loofah to the bathroom, so I had to make two trips. I remember unpacking these items. I remember packing these items before I left. When I returned home from my trip, my body wash was in my bathroom. Only explanation is that I have two and didn't realize it, and someone had taken it. But I didn't have to. It was new and the first time I'd ever gotten that scent in body wash, so... I have no explanation for this. I clearly used it as the loofah, which was also new, was wet and smelled like the body wash in question. I also had to shave, so I definitely used it, and I smelled great afterwards. Would never use my shampoo and would have used my face watch, which is unscented, instead. This was very odd. When my fun and popular twin suggested we switch clothes for the day, I got excited at the thought of hanging out with the cool kids for a change. It's been a year now and still no one has realized that it wasn't my body they found in the river that day. And with that, our time together is coming to an end. First of all, I'd like to thank everyone who supports me on Patreon and through memberships. Thank you guys, as always, for your support. You really help this channel quite a bit. If you have a story you'd like me to narrate, please send it to me either through my website, my email, or my subreddit. All the links are down below for easier access. Last, but never least, I'd like to thank everyone who let me narrate their stories this evening. I found this was a wide variety of glitches. Some people appearing twice, even living things appearing out of nothingness. Just popping into existence before popping back out, I guess. Also, when you're sure you're going to be late for work and are actually on time, and it seems like maybe they were fated for an accident that they missed. I truly love reading Glitch of the Matrix stories. They are some of the most bizarre true stories that I can read, to be honest. They always make me think when I read them and how I would react if anything like this ever happened to me. That's not to say that I haven't had my own Glitch in the Matrix stories. I have had one that I know for a fact I've narrated on this story about the appearing vapes in my car. I don't think I'll ever forget that one. I can explain two, but I can't explain the third. Now, if you enjoy these stories, hit that like button and make sure it feels it. If you're new, please subscribe and turn that pretty little bell to all notifications. And of course, I would love a comment. 
Tell me what kind of stories you like in the future, which one of these was your favorite, anything like that. If you're on the podcast, you can either leave me a five-star review, or if you're on Spotify, now they allow comments as well. If you'd like to help this channel slash podcast grow, please share it with anyone who might enjoy it. If you'd like to help in a more financial way, like the people I mentioned before, I do have Patreon and memberships, where for a dollar a month you get early access, as well as some other bonuses if you go into higher tiers. If you'd like to just do a one-time donation, I do have PayPal, Buy Me A Coffee, and Super Thanks on YouTube. As always, this is never expected, but always appreciated. YouTube is my hobby, and I truly enjoy doing it, and seeing what people enjoy are the stories I bring to life for them. Since the beginning, I've always said thank you for watching and listening. It always has and always will mean the world to me. Sleep tight and don't let 42 bite.